Good morning, everyone. A warm welcome, one and all, those joining us here in person and those near and far worshiping with us through electronic means. Welcome and God's blessing to all. Just a few quick announcements to get us started. First of all, I have an update for everyone on that most thrilling and exciting of initiatives known as the Sanctuary Lighting Project. Try to contain your enthusiasm. <laughs> the plan had been that on March 8th, the work would begin in here to replace all the lighting fixtures and that we would, for a couple Sundays and probably a couple Thursdays, be worshiping down in the multi-purpose room while that was being done. But we got word on Thursday that quite a few of the parts that are needed for the project are still in transit and are either somewhere between here and San Diego or between San Diego and wherever they were manufactured. So there is no way they can guarantee that we'll start on March 8th. The plan is now to delay the project until sometime after Holy Week and Easter. So the hope is in early April, we will have the chance to get these lighting fixtures worked on. But as soon as there is anything more concrete, I will let you know. The good news is, of course, that that means we will be in here for Sunday and for Thursday worship throughout the season of Lent with no change. So keep your ears open and keep your eye on our website because when things get a little closer and we have a plan for how this will work, we'll be posting the exact dates of when the construction will happen and we'll also post information on how getting in and out of the building will change a bit during that time. A little closer to home on the calendar, a reminder that during Lent we have evening prayer every Thursday at 7 o'clock, and this year we will be using incense during evening prayer. We tested it out this past Thursday night and everything seemed to go well, but a reminder for everyone who was not here, if you know that you are sensitive to incense, you may wish to take allergy medication ahead of time if it does bother you. But if you have any questions, feel free to talk to any member of the Worship and Music Committee. Also, some reminders for you that because we can't do soup and bread this year as we normally would, we will be doing our youth group soup sale during Lent, and the soup will be sold in the middle of March. We need the orders and payments into the office no later than the end of the day on the 17th. And that's because when we serve it the following weekend, we need to know exactly how much to buy for ingredients. So a reminder, please do get your orders in. It's by the court. Get your orders and your payment into the office ahead of time. And if you have any questions on that, feel free to grab Michael Williams. He has a wealth of information on the project. A reminder also that your Easter lily forms are available on the table in the narthex and so is the 2020 Book of Reports. Please make sure to get those. In the past, we've had those reports lay around for a good while before they found a home. So if you know that you would like an annual report, please do make sure to grab one on your way out the door. And a reminder as well, as you get every week, to please keep an eye on Palm's website. Again, as the lighting project, becomes more concrete and as Holy Week draws closer, we will have more updates posted for you and they, there may well be other things posted. So please do keep an eye on the website. And as always, if someone in your family or in your social circles does not have a computer or does not have regular internet access and you see something that needs their attention, please do give them a call and let them know. We have done a fantastic job of communicating during these months, so let's keep it up. That is all the announcements I have. Is there anything that's not printed that needs to be brought up? If not, please rise and let us begin worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, 
the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit, to follow in the way of Jesus, as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Let us hum together our gathering hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Good morning. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, folks here and folks at home. Um, gee, is Brooks over there today? <laughs> oh, okay. Ah, hi, Brooks. <laughs> okay, you know that I usually do some drawings and ask the children at home to do them too, so. Um, if you have a piece of paper ready, great. If you don't, well, that's okay. You can ask mom and dad to look at this again later so you can do it. Today, you're gonna to hear from Pastor Carl some, Jesus say some very strange things. And Jesus often tells his disciples and the people following him some very strange things. And one of the first things that he says in today's gospel <clears throat> is that He's trying to prepare those people following him for the fact that he is going to die. And he tells them that he has to suffer and die. Well, his people, the followers, know that he is the Messiah. They finally got it. They believe that. The Messiah that was told about in the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, and by the prophets. And, but Messiah means savior, and they thought, that that meant Jesus was gonna be like a, some superhero, some wonderful warrior who's gonna defeat all of the king's armies and become king himself. Jesus would be king and bring peace to the world, to his kingdom. But, and when he told them that he was going to die, they all said, no, 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 we won't let that happen. And they, they probably said things like, we'll save you, we'll protect you, we're not gonna let that happen. But Jesus rebuked them. Now that's a strange word we don't hear that much today, but rebuked means scolded. When your parents scold you, they're rebuking you. And he rebuked them, especially Peter. And he, and Peter rebuked Jesus and said, no, 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 we'll save you, we'll save you. Well, Jesus rebuked Peter, scolded Peter and said, he even called him the devil. He said, get behind me, Satan. Your mind is of things, of human things, and not what God wants. And I'm sure that confused them very much. So let me ask you this. First, I want, I want you to draw human things, things that are important to you, things that, that mean power, the kind of human power that people have when they're king. So. But, but let's just think about what's important to you. So I'm gonna ask some of the grown-ups here. <clears throat> what is important to you? What kinds of things do you really want to have in this life? That you, things, goals you want to achieve, things you want to have. Anybody? Music. Music, okay. So we will draw some music notes. Someone wants to make sure they have music. And how do you get music in your life? Well, by singing, maybe from the radio, maybe you collect CDs so you can hear the kind of music you like. Um, anybody, anything else? Things you want to get a lot of. Maybe for you kids, it's toys. Um, now, I'm not a good artist, so that means you don't have to be either. But maybe, maybe you want to have um, a doll. Some of you girls or boys want to have dolls. Uh, well, anyway, oops, she only has one leg. Um, <laughs> and maybe you want to have pets. Do you cherish your pet? Now, I can't draw a dog very well. I've tried, so I can draw a cat if you make it look like a snowman and put ears on him and a tail and whiskers. So maybe you really cherish your cat. Your cat's very special to you, your pets. I like jewelry. I really like jewelry and I kind of collect jewelry. I'll draw a ring here. That's supposed to be a ring, a shiny ring. So these are the things that Jesus said, you have your mind on human things. I'm not talking about human things. And if you collect this stuff and that's what you think I'm talking about, shame on you. And then he went on to say something else. When he was telling them that he had to die, he told them 
that you have to lose, if you lose your life for my sake, you will save it. What does that mean? How can you save your life by losing it? What he meant was this. He meant that if you are willing to give up all of this stuff and live your life for Jesus, you will then have eternal life. He knew what God meant for him to do when he came to earth, and he knew why. Because when he died and rose from the dead, that was the promise that God was making to all of us, that when we die, it's not over. We will live for eternity in heaven with God by Jesus' side. And so that's what he meant. If you're willing to give up all this, and the most important thing in your life is Jesus, then you will have eternal life. And what is the one symbol that we know means to Christians, Jesus died for us? Anybody? What's the one thing that? The cross. So I want you to make a big cross, bigger than any of those things that you draw, a big cross. And if you will live for that, you will have eternal life. Thank you. Let's say a prayer. Lord God, we are so grateful that you sent your son to die for us that we don't ever have to die forever again. We will live eternally in heaven with you. Amen. Thank you. The first reading is from the 17th chapter of Genesis. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant <clears throat> to you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you <clears throat> and to your offspring after you. God said to Abram, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her, <clears throat> her name. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We shall read Psalm 22 responsively. You who fear the Lord, give praise, all you of Jacob. Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. 
for those who seek the Lord in grace. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. In Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they may be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of Romans, verses 35 through 25. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is their violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hope, <clears throat> hoping after, against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said. So numerous <clears throat> shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him. <clears throat> as righteousness. Now the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be <clears throat> reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? 
Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of us remember the days when the Cash for Clunkers initiative was a thing? Anybody? Some of us do. How many of us, during that time, heard at least one person referred to as a clunker, or heard someone describe themselves as a clunker? Anybody? Some of us probably did. The initiative itself was a good move for the environment, for sure. It got cars off of the street that were in bad shape. But it also popularized, dare I say, it affirmed a problem in our culture. The problem being, when something gets old or doesn't work, the way it always did, we tend to brush it aside, to brand it as no longer being useful, no longer gifted with potential, no longer worthy of contributing anything to society. But sometimes, what is old, or at least what appears old, may surprise us with how much power it still has. Nobody knew this better than a saint of the church named John Christian Frederick Heyer. John Heyer was a missionary sent by some of the earliest Pennsylvania Lutherans to India, where he spent most of his life. He returned to the United States at two different times when his health started to deteriorate. The second time, he stuck around because he could not go back overseas. And he was sent in his retirement to serve as the house father at the seminary in Philadelphia. They had posted a job for a house father for a very specific reason. The church was concerned that its seminarians were spending way too much time in taverns when they should have had their noses in books. Heyer acquired, thus, a reputation of hobbling up and down Germantown Avenue late at night, wandering into taverns, walking stick in hand, and then shooing seminarians out the door and chasing them back up the avenue, back to campus, staggering along the cobblestone streets and yelling in a croaky voice in German. Now, Heyer had invested a lot of his life in the service of the church, but looking at the reputation that he got as a house father, you can tell that he was branded as a clunker. But he wasn't the only one to have faced that kind of description. Abram could relate to that. Abram had two big marks against him as far as being successful. One, he was a bit up in age, even by the standards of the book of Genesis, a book in which people are described as living for hundreds of years. But still, to get to 99 years old is nothing to be sneezed at. More significantly, though, was the fact that he had no children. Why, then, did God suddenly show up in Ur of the Chaldeans give him a new name and the promise of a huge family, and then command him to leave his homeland then and there and start out for a whole new chapter in life at the age of 99. Nevertheless, God selected him. Some 4,000 years down the line, Christians, Muslims, and Jews across the globe treasure our descent from Abraham, from old clunkers, from a couple deemed barren, 
came three enormous families of faith. In time, one descendant of Abraham would be the incarnation of God. Abraham's age and his lack of status meant nothing to God in this tale. The good news of this reading for Abraham and for us is this. Even what the world calls an old clunker can still be a treasure and can still be of use to God and to God's people when infused by grace. In fact, by the grace of God, the dying and even the dead can be remade and raised to new life. Abraham's heritage is our faith, faith in a God who makes all things new. Go back to the story of John Heyer for a second. After his death, more about who he was and what he had done came to light among Pennsylvania Lutherans. But much remained silent, particularly during the years after he returned to Pennsylvania. For example, it wasn't until after his death that anybody knew or wrote about the fact that at the age of 70, the man came home from India for the first time and went to medical school in order to go back to India as a physician, which he did until his health forced him once again to retire and brought him to Philly at the age of 82. But we didn't know that then, nor did we know that he was responsible for founding hundreds of Lutheran churches in India, leading to nine Lutheran denominations now flourishing there. Everybody just knew John Heyer as an old clunker, a man with stiff knees, a gravelly voice, wrinkled skin, and sparse white hair. It's a shame that we didn't know him for the treasure he really was until after he was gone. But more important even than what he did was the truth that he shared with each and every one of us here. No matter how old or clunky we might get, no matter how the world might brand us, he was, and we all are, baptized. A few splashes of cold water initiated him and us into Abraham's line. That same God who covenanted with Abraham loves and treasures all of us throughout every minute of life and into eternity. Christ will place that love in our hands once more in a few minutes up at the altar. That meal will empower us all to go out of here and proclaim the good news attributed to Abraham. The good news that what the world calls old clunkers are, in the eyes of God, truly priceless treasures. That is what really matters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, saying, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their, their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and to join you in tending to creation's well-being. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, especially Jerry and Linda, Bruce, John and Arlene, Ted, Leon, Marta, Richard, Kay, Gary, Bernie, Frank, Tony, Amanda, Nancy, Margaret, Sharon, George, Carter, Marilyn, Merle, Dorothy, and Arlene. Restore all who are sick or grieving. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, and foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you, 
that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Remaining where you are and sharing the greeting with a wave, let us offer one another a sign of peace, and don't forget to wave toward the camera to greet those worshiping with us electronically. Peace be with you. 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 Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and to prepare with joy for the Paschal feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. Thanks be to God. of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. Christ given for you. body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Let us hum together our closing hymn.
Thanks be to God.